picked the perfect guest for our first SSCA Content Creators Summit interview, and that's the famous yachtsman, Jimmy Cornell. And talk about a content creator. Jimmy was creating content way, way, way before it was a buzzword. He was, uh, when he was sailing around the world with his children on a boat, he was sending recordings to the BBC and already there he was creating content. Then as the uh, computers and the internet came on, he started the noon site where he was creating content to give information to uh, all of us cruisers to help us safely get around the world. He's written all these books, which we'll be speaking about in this interview. And uh, he continues to this day to keep creating content. And uh, he's a definite creator. So welcome, Jimmy. It's very nice to see you again. And I'm so anxious to speak to you as our first guest. Well, I'm very happy to speak to you and uh, Luke as well. Can you just give us an idea of how many books you have written? Oh, I think about maybe 20, uh, and they have been translated into various languages. But it's been going for the last, I think, 50 years since I wrote the first book. And sorry, for the last 40 years since I wrote the first book. So I think up to about 20, I think. And what was the very first book that you wrote, Jimmy? Oh, of course I remember. Everyone remembered their first book. Uh, it was called Modern Ocean Cruising and uh, was published in 1982, so that's about 40 years ago. And it was based on a very big survey, the first of my many surveys that I carried out in 1978-79 in Fiji and in other parts of the South Pacific among a very large number of uh, sailors on a world voyage. As a BBC trained journalist, I was always quite irritated by the fact that all the books that were on the market to dealing with the sailing matters were very subjective and written from the point of view of only the author without giving a glimpse into how other people would have dealt with a similar situation or similar votes in, in their case. So I interviewed 62 long distance sailors in that very first interview and asked them everything about themselves, about the boat they sailed, the equipment, the crew, the type of rigging, the, absolutely everything. And this was published first as a series of articles which were published all over the world in all the leading sailing magazines. It was a very original way of writing about uh, sailing and the sailors. And then it was the basis of my first book. All right. Yeah, that's very good <clears throat> to get uh, an innovative uh, look at things. And that started kind of like your um, signature modus operandi, which is uh, the survey, surveying other people and finding out more than just what your opinion or your, uh, your practice was. And uh, of all these books that you've written, what what is the most popular one or the best selling of your books? I think at the moment is the World Cruising Roots, which has been translated into several languages. It sold well over 200, maybe 250,000 copies. Uh, and it's really one of the best selling nautical books in the world, not just mine. It was the kind of book, in a way, I look back on it, the kind of book that I wish I'd had myself on my first voyage. Uh, where to go, when to go, what route to sail, what kind of weather to conditions, weather conditions to expect. And um, that set the tone for virtually all my following books, because um, strangely enough, uh, I still continue writing books that I wish I'd had had on my first voyage myself. So that is what goes in roots. Uh, that is really still going very well. It is now in the ninth edition, uh, and it's still going very well. Oh, that's great. We, of course, have that uh, that book on board. So many of the other cruisers have that book on board, and <clears throat> the book that you wish you had 
all of us are so happy to have the those books. In fact, we were looking the other day, some people uh, that Luke is helping uh, do some voyage planning, uh, we were looking in uh, to find out what was the best time for them to do the uh, voyage that they wanted to do. So it's so great to have that book, and we always do recommend it to people. Okay, so Jimmy, also, what uh, is your latest book? Uh, my latest book, if I can call it a book, it's a large atlas. Uh, it's an atlas of uh, pilot charts. It is now in the third edition, and I have worked a lot. I have worked uh, last year on it because as everyone knows, and um, I hope everyone agrees, weather conditions throughout the world are changing very fast due to the global warming and climate change. And in this last edition of the Atlas, which uh, contains uh, pilot charts for the entire world, uh, I have focused primarily on the changes that have occurred, uh, the less um, reliable trade winds on major routes, uh, the increase in the intensity and the frequency and especially the areas covered by tropical storms, all facts that contribute to the success and safety on a offshore voyage. But besides giving the information to sailors of what they should avoid, I also try to influence people by saying that in spite of everything that is going on at the moment in world climate, it is still possible to plan a safe voyage, provided you know the facts and you know exactly what to avoid. So I want to have an optimistic tone uh, by sh showing that being aware of the problems that we're faced with, with good planning, it is still possible to undertake and complete a voyage successfully and safely. Yes, okay, that's uh, that's very good, Jimmy. Uh, <clears throat> it's true that um, the um, climate is changing very quickly and some sometimes uh, very strangely, but as you have probably observed in your, your atlas and all the research that you've done in your atlas, there's still patterns that uh, people can relate to and still make a perfectly safe voyage. So that that's great. It's wonderful that you update these things because we remember the old pilot charts from, you know, the whaling days and all that, and no one ever really uh, updated those sort of things. And it was just kind of a government publication. But this is great that you've uh, done something to make it more and more relevant to all of us. Now, all of these books that you've done, the sailing routes, the surveys, the atlas, and that sort of thing, uh, are all kind of statistical and factual kind of books. But have you also written any kind of personal books, personalized books? Yes, well, I decided that after many, the many years of sailing I've done and uh, having been so fortunate in being able to sail at a time when it was still possible to sail on a low budget, uh, with a small, rather small boat. Um, recently, I mean, last year, I published a book called, I don't know whether this is the best title, Come Sail the World with Me. Um, wow. And I try to give an idea. On the one hand, uh, I describe all my various voyages, my five different boats, but every other type, uh, every, every other chapter, is a practical chapter to deal with navigation, uh, planning a voyage, crew, uh, sales, finances, and so on. So it is on the one hand, it's a narrative uh, inspiring people perhaps to follow in my own wake. On the other hand, giving a lot of practical information on all the aspects of interest to anyone who is planning to do an offshore voyage. All right, that sounds like a very good combination. Come sail the world with me. Uh, uh, is that correct? If I have that title correct? Well, yes, it's an invitation for everyone to pick up that book and uh, join me in a voyage to the furthest corners of the world. Because I've been 
twice to Antarctica through the Northwest Passage, not to speak about all the fantastic tropical destinations. Well, we sometimes arrived with Gwenda and our two children on the first voyage that is now, where we started in 74, so that is coming up to 50 years ago. Um, we were the first white children they saw there, in some places the first white woman. I don't think I was the first white man to be seen in those places, but even so, uh, it was a fantastic world to visit and to explore in those days. Okay, that's wonderful. That should be a very interesting book for people to to take up to find out uh, about you personally, about your voyages, but also to get uh, a lot of advice and facts. So that's a that's a great formula for that book. All right. So, what is the reason you decided to publish your own books, Jimmy? Well, in a, in a way, yes. Uh, Again, I'm a kind of a perfectionist, and I wasn't happy with the way my books uh, looked who, who, that were published by established publishers. And I said, well, look, publishers can't write books. I can publish books. So I said, why don't I become a publisher? So I gradually, up to this moment, I withdrew my rights, publishing rights from the various publishers that I uh, give them to. And I started publishing my own books under the logo of Cornell Sailing. The main reason that I uh, decided to do it myself was not just uh, from the point of view of uh, the, the quality of the books, but also the fact that very often books that were totally out of date continue to be sold. Whereas if I am in control, after three or four years, we publish a new edition, and if there is any stock left, we destroy it. We don't continue selling just because we still have a stock of books. On the contrary, well, this is not a very good uh, approach by anyone who's running a company for profit. I have the luxury that I can decide for myself. And if we come after three or four years, I feel that the book is now obsolete. We destroy that title, uh, those books, that the stock, and publish a new edition. And that's, that's why in the last 12 months, I have published new editions of World Voyage Planner, uh, of uh, Cruising Routes, uh, and now the third edition of the Atlas. And this is all in one year, a lot of work. But it's going very well. <laughs> wow. Yes, that uh, sounds like a lot of work, but uh, knowing you and the amount of energy you have, if you're not doing that much work, then uh, it's not, not uh, worth just sitting around. So uh, that all right, and uh, and is this uh, also the main reason that you continue writing, publishing, publishing books, and everything, even at your age? Well, it's a strange thing that I have to be. I'm, I'm always honest, but I I feel that I've been extremely fortunate. Really, um, I want to go back a little bit in my own history. Because I grew up in Romania uh, under the communist regime. Uh, I suffered a lot. My father died in prison as a political prisoner. And then I met Gwenda, who is English. And eventually, after many, many years, I managed to get a passport to leave Romania and came to England uh, to join Gwenda, where they had one child, our daughter, Doina. And Ivan was born a few weeks after I arrived in London. Um, I got a job at the BBC. Uh, I was very well paid. We had a very stable and uh, enjoyable life. And then I decided, well, I don't really want to have a career before I had done what I always wanted to do, and that was to sail. Although in Romania I couldn't do it because it was forbidden, but in England I started to sail on a BBC yacht, uh, belonging to the BBC Yacht Club, and I certainly said, all right. I'd like to go. Um, I told Gwenda uh, my plan, and she started laughing, but she's always very keen to travel after all. That's how we met. Uh, we didn't have much money, so all I could afford was to buy a bare hull, a Trintella 36 fiberglass. And in one year, record time, I managed to fit out the boat all of my, my own, to build the furniture, not very well, but anyway, it was functional. We equipped a boat and we set off. We left in 1975 uh, after one year of preparations. And for over six years, we sailed 
I, I can't remember, but well over 50,000 miles to about, about 80 or 90 countries. Um, and that's how uh, I managed to do always what I always wanted. Um, and this is why I'm coming now back to my uh, uh, boat, that having been so fortunate to see the world in those days, to sail so much safely, um, I feel a kind of a responsibility to pass on this knowledge and experience. And this is the gist. And uh, um, also, wow. the other thing is um, you continue to be interested in all different kinds of sailing. Uh, in the last 50 years, you've owned five very different kinds of boats. <clears throat> and uh, so that means over 50 years, uh, that's practically one different boat every decade. So was this a natural evolution to that you moved into different kinds of boats, or is there some other reason why you decided on such different boats uh, from each, uh, boats that different from each other? Well, I, I don't know what the evolution is the right word. Perhaps it is, but in, in every case, looking back now, I had done the r right choice with the first boat, the second one, and so on. But there was a certain, okay, I take your word for it, and um, there was a sort of evolution. I learned from one boat, and I went to the next boat, and I tried to improve on it. For example, in the 1970s, when I was sailing in the Pacific, uh, was you know, that map and the, the old charts and so on, and a lot of boats were lost, on reefs especially, um, because of poor navigation. Um, so, of course, the first boat was fiberglass, and the second one was uh, steel, uh, uh, virtually indestructible, a very strong, very heavy boat, and so on. Well, that wasn't such a good idea, because it, maintenance was very high on the steel boats and so on. So by the third boat, I discovered aluminum. And uh, so number three was that aluminum, but I had also learned very, things along the way to make the boat very functional, uh, easy to sail, um, short-handed. Uh, and that Aventura, my third Aventura, took me to the Antarctic and on a third around the world voyage. By the time to the, we came to the fourth Aventura, I was planning to sail or attempting to sail through the Northwest Passage. And um, I was very fortunate, and again, I am a lucky man, because uh, one of the best manufacturers of aluminum, aluminum boats is Garcia, it's a French company. Um, and uh, they were looking for a new design, a new concept. And I, I spoke to the owner of the company, and I thought, look, I have ideas over all these years, and I'd like to build a boat that could sail anywhere to any, for all seasons and all seasons and so on. So, well, all right, it sounds a very tall um, order, but tell me what you really think would be a, such a boat. And I, this is how I designed and conceived the uh, exploration uh, concept. Uh, uh, centerboard boat with uh, an aluminum, of course, uh, with uh, low draft and so on, with a 270 degrees um, uh, vision in, in the main cab from the main cabin, inside the steering and uh, position and so on. And that was the first, the, f for, the first was exploration 45, and I did manage eventually to sail through the Northwest Passage. But what is very interesting that last week, I went to Cannes Boat Show in the south of France and exhibited now the 60, uh, exploration 60 that is evolved from 45 to 52. The 52 is also selling extremely well and now the first 60 footer. And I went on board, it was very much removed from my boat. But anyway, so now I'm coming back, it might have been an evolution up to number four. And then when I come to number five, uh, I decided that we live in a time when we have to look very carefully at how we drive and how we live and what kind of boat we have. And I said, I must attempt to build a boat with zero carbon footprint. Uh, well, eventually it came a zero carbon dioxide uh, footprint because Aventura 5 is a catamaran. And I'll come back in, to, in a moment how I moved from a monohull to a multi -hull. 
but uh, it was conceived to produce enough electricity. Uh, it had two specially designed propellers that when you're sailing and they're rotating, they produce electricity. Um, and it was launched in, 19, in 2020. Now, 2020, uh, I did a long voyage in the uh, uh, North Atlantic and hoping to continue all the way around the world. Uh, it worked very well, but unfortunately, the COVID pandemic struck and my crew was very concerned that we should not continue around the world. So I sailed back to France and we sailed all the way from the Canary Islands to France about 1500 miles. This was a winter crossing with zero carbon dioxide emissions because we didn't stop, we didn't, we didn't have any fuel. And by the way, the boat didn't have a, a, a diesel engine, I, I, nor did I have a diesel generator. I only had a hydro generator. And we sailed all the way for 1,500 miles. And uh, I achieved that uh, first, uh, that my first priority was to conceive and produce a boat that can sail with the zero carbon footprint. Also, it gave me the opportunity to try out a catamaran because before I had always had monohulls. And I must admit, I'm totally converted because uh, this boat, the Outremer 45, now it was renamed as a Outremer 4Z or Z for. Uh, Zero, zero carbon. Um, it's a performance catamaran. The old Ultraman, Ultramer, the French boat, built boat, um, is, uh, they are very performance, perfect uh, sailors, and um, very satisfying to, to have such a boat that is very light, uh, very easily maneuvered, very fast, and at the same time, being so fast, being able to produce electricity as you say. So this is how I came to my last port, because it's definitely my last port. I don't think I'll have another one. <laughs> so Jimmy, you have sailed all over the world, have organized cruising rallies, written books. What do you regard as your greatest success? Well, there's a very easy answer to that. My family life. Uh, having taken the decision to leave without children, they were very young, five and seven years old, um, and they, having grown up on a boat in 24 hours together, we see very close. Uh, we see very close friends. Ivan was seriously helping me to do something in our apartment here in London. Doyle is coming to see us tomorrow. Um, so I think this is my greatest success give the satisfaction of having such a wonderful family life, which is definitely, I'm convinced, uh, based on all those years that we spent together, as it were, 24 hours a day. Not many parents managed to do that. I think that's, that's what it is, yeah. Um, but it's very interesting because I was asked exactly the same question by a journalist at the boat show in France where I was last week. And then I, after I left, I realized uh, it, that wasn't the greatest satisfaction. I think it was the greatest pleasure I had out of having uh, this wonderful family life for all these years and still being so close to my wife, Gwenda. We've been together now for 57 years and our two wonderful children. No, I think the greatest satisfaction is to be on the ocean well, you're on your own, on a little boat, definitely to be able and to have to deal with every problem that might occur, to be in charge of your life, of your fate, of your destiny, I, I think that is the most satisfying thing that I've uh, experienced and I continue to experience looking back, and I think that whoever listens to interview as a sailor, to know that it gives such a s profound sense of satisfaction when you're in the middle ocean of, of the ocean, you are dependent on your own wisdom, 
experience, attitude, mindset to solve problems. And this is something that we should apply now when we facing the greatest crisis that humanity is facing, and that is climate change, global warming, all these changes that are going to occur. We as sailors are closer to nature than anyone else on Earth. We're there in the middle of the ocean, we sail on our little boats and so on. And I think that because we're so used to finding solutions, I do hope that this attitude, this, this the, being able to find a solution will translate to everyone that we face up to the crisis and find a solution. And this is why at the beginning, when you asked me that question, I was so confident and so optimistic to say that even in these times of change, sailors who are planning to live on a voyage, I believe can do it safely because us sailors are very cautious. We always know how to find a solution and we'll be able to make sure that we plan and complete a voyage safely. Okay, Jimmy, that's a wonderful and inspiring uh, ideas to uh, share with all of us. Uh, do you have any other kind of elaboration that you would uh, like to say or advise to any sailors planning or dreaming to set off on a world voyage sometime in the future? Well, yes, of course I have. I always have some advice to give. Do it. The sooner you can, do it. If you really want to do it, we don't know what we face with in the future. We know what is happening now. And as I stressed twice already in this interview, uh, it is still possible to plan a voyage safely. Uh, but how long is it going to last? So this is why I think that anyone who plans to live on a shorter or longer voyage should do their best to do it. Don't wait too long. You may never be able to do it if you don't do it now or in the near future. All right. Thank you very much for all those great uh, words of wisdom, for uh, telling us uh, why you've done the things that you've done, and for being such a great content creator, one of the greatest and earliest, I have to say, and you always have been the innovator in, uh, in uh, yachting and the ideas of um, innovating things in, in a, something that's been organized already it, to, to come up with a brand new idea and you've always been doing that and I'm so sure you will continue to do that you never know what's going to come out of Jimmy Cornell next <laughs> but one thing I would like to, to share with uh, all the people that are watching that uh, Jimmy will be in October this year at the Annapolis Boat Show and he's going to be at the Seven Seas Cruising Association, the SSCA booth. And he's going to be there um, all during the show. And uh, I would tell anyone who is to be fortunate enough to be able to go to this show that they must, must, must meet Jimmy Cornell and speak with him. And you'll find out what an inspirational person he is. And... Uh, just a real, real wonderful person to know. And we have always treasured our times with Jimmy and our cruising, even though our cruising styles were quite different. We are more anchorers and Jimmy is more a sailor and a voyager. Uh, but we have so much enjoyed uh, our, our friendship with Jimmy. And we thank you, Jimmy, again, for being our first guest on the SSCA Content Creators Cruiser Summit, and we're wishing you the best. And everyone, please uh, go see Jimmy at the boat show. Um, if people are not able to do that, do you have a, a website or any uh, place that you would like to say uh, how people can find out more about you or more about your books, Jimmy? Well, it's cornellsailing.com, but basically, 
that my book speaks for themselves. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Uh, we've so much enjoyed it, and uh, it's uh, been a great pleasure. <laughs>